We have nowadays many, many options on how to deal with facial hairs. If you want to use a temporary method, we have uh, waxing, shaving, um, we also have uh, threading, so there's many ways. However, there's only two specific permanent removal, which is laser and electrolysis. So go get yourself a pen and paper and we're gonna start right now. So very quickly, my name is Maria from Vancouver, Canada. I wanna thank you for the people that have been following me. I'm so appreciative. For the individuals that do not know me, hopefully you will follow me. My tutorials are mainly on uh, education in skincare and the different kinds of machineries, the pros and cons. So I will really love for you to follow me. If you do, subscribe and most of all, share my tutorials with others. So today I'm going to discuss about the difference between laser and electrolysis. There's a little bit of confusion. So I wanna put a pinpoint. Uh, of course, I have the tendency to like one more than the other and you will notice that, but mainly is to educate the uh, people, the, the industry and uh, also the community so you can make the right choice. Which one is better for you, laser or electrolysis? So let's get started. For centuries, women had to deal about facial hair, body hair, and uh, it is not only to deal because it looks better for the Western women, but sometimes could be hormonal. It also could be that you have inherited the facial um, growth. Uh, for example, uh, certain nationalities have more hair than other nationalities. But we also noticed the last 20, 30 years that men also want to take care of their unibrow or chest hair, back hair. So this now is about not only about women, it's also about men wanting to look groomed and want to take care about themselves. So the temporary hair removal methods are, the very popular one is waxing, threading, tweezing, shaving, but that is only temporary. And also chemical uh, creams that you can apply, which are like a very uh, dehydrating to the skin. However, some individuals are happy with that methodology, knowing that you know that the hair will come back sometimes uh, thicker, sometimes distorted, but that is an option that you have. But there is another option, two options actually. One is electrolysis and one is laser. I would like to talk a little bit about the history of electrolysis first, and then we go into the laser. Electrolysis have been around for over 135 years. So it has a lot of documentation, it has a lot of uh, history. And because of that, the FDA has approved it as permanent hair removal. The only procedure that actually destroys the hair. The only thing with electrolysis is very tedious. You're doing one hair at a time. The uh, more uh, experienced electrologists can work a little bit faster, but still it takes time for that hair to get destroyed. So here I have a drawing. I'm sorry that is backwards, but that's the way it goes. So you have the skin here, epidermis dermis, uh, and the bulb is found at the bottom here of uh, the dermis here. Uh, the electrologist will insert a filament. A lot of people call it needle, but it is a, a, a a thin filament which is just as thick as the hair. Uh, the electrologist will insert it all the way down to the end of the bulb and then the, the electrologist will release uh, the current. And I'm going to talk about it at different modalities in a second. Once that is destroyed, it might take uh, two or three seconds, the electrologist will pull the hair out and it will slide out. If it is tugging, the electrologist will have to go back into that hair follicle and put an additional uh, current to get it destroyed. Is it painful? Well, it doesn't feel good, but the uh, 
the esthetician must or the electrologist must uh, ask the client or the patient how much current she can handle so the patient or the client is the one that controls how much current so if you put less current of course it takes a little bit longer if you put more current then uh, it will be much faster but it also could cause a little uh, burns on the surface so you have to be very very careful uh, there is three modalities and uh, the first and, and all three of them they will have to uh, insert the little filament so the first modality is called the galvanic uh, electrolysis and that is the old mythology it takes actually sometimes even 15 or 30 seconds per hair but what happens is that the uh, the galvanic is a direct current uh, it causes a, a chemical reaction. Of course, you have to have a little bit of knowledge and history here. Uh, chemical reaction and the chemical, it turns into sodium hydroxide. And the sodium hydroxide, which is lye, it uh, actually um, decomposes the hair bulb. And then you uh, pull, you slide the hair out. It's very slow, but very, very accurate. The second one is thermolysis. And thermolysis, they, we use high frequency current. It is an oscillating current causing heat and that will coagulate. So again, we go down here, we coagulate uh, the bulb, but that is only a couple of seconds, two, three, four seconds, depending how thick the hair is. And then we slide it out. Uh, the third mythology is uh, the, the last one that was developed later on. And it's called the blend. And basically, we are inserting with one needle, we're inserting both currents. So it's all about a little bit more about the technology, but it uh, works amazing. It is, a, of course, slower than laser, but we do see 100% results. Uh, I have a lot of information. So if you want more information of all this, please send me uh, through the link below about um, additional information and I'm more than happy to send it to you. Laser for uh, hair removal was created or invented in the 90s. So we don't have as much documentation or history on laser. Uh, also, the laser allows us to, des to describe it as permanent hair reduction, not permanent hair removal. Only electrolysis is permanent. So laser is just reduction. Very important to remember. After the treatment, you ha will have some redness. There's no insertion of uh, uh, a filament, so it's not as evasive as uh, electrolysis. After the treatment, you will cool it down with uh, some aloe vera, vera juice or, or gel, whatever you have, and, uh, but it is not permanent. And let me look, uh, do a little bit of theory here. So we have laser, sorry, it's backwards, laser, mainly done by uh, doctors, and IPL more by uh, medical estheticians or uh, clinical estheticians. So we have a probe, and with the probe, there is uh, the, uh, uh, the light pulse coming through uh, the skin. The light pulse is attracted to the bulb, okay? In the bulb area, we have a lot of melanin pigment, but also very, very important to know is that in the germinativum layer, we have melanocytes, don't we? And also in the papillary layer, we have melanocytes and also throughout the dermis. Now, the darker the skin, more um, release of melanin. So if I'm uh, light-skinned, of course, I will have less uh, melanin versus the person that has uh, a darker skin. Now, I always not encourage laser onto the face because there has been cases that after the, uh, the laser, women had experienced hair growth. And this is called paradoxical hypertrichosis hair growth. It's caused by the heat. 
the heat of, uh, and of course you as uh, the uh, client or patient can control the amount of heat. If it is too hot, you just mention to the technician that it's too hot. However, sometimes you just want to bear a little bit extra heat, but that could also cause, if you have a, a darker skin, hyperpigmentation or hypo. Hyper means more, hypo means less. So you'll have a discoloration. Why? Is because there's not only pigment here, this pigment throughout, even if you have light skin, but a light skin you're not gonna notice as much as a darker skin. Also, laser, you cannot uh, do laser on uh, blonde hair, red hair, or white hair. You cannot. And uh, some technicians will not do laser on very dark, dark skin. So you have a little bit of uh, being limited with a laser. However, I do believe that laser in uh, larger areas like arms, uh, legs, tummy, back, areas that it doesn't matter if all the hairs are not destroyed, and it's, that, is, uh, that is okay, that you don't mind if you all have the odd hair coming back. However, because the FDA is saying that it is permanent hair reduction, it is reduction because the hair will come back. Maybe not as thick, but it will come back. So before you start any tampering with your face, that you're starting with hair uh, growth, hypertrichosis, or on the body, go and check with your doctor. I would say that is the most important thing. Ask your doctor to send you to an endocrinologist to check out why you're having hair growth. You could have polycystic ovarian syndrome, uh, or you might go through menopause. Uh, a lot of times if you're pregnant, I do not advise electrolysis or laser on pregnant women, but a lot of times through pregnancy, you might get additional hair. However, once the pregnancy is over, the hair will drop. Uh, if they don't drop, then go get some electrolysis, especially if it's on, on the face. Uh, so before you do any form of uh, electrolysis, laser or anything like that, check why you're getting this uh, hair growth. If it is hereditary because uh, your whole family has hair, then uh, choose the right procedure for you. So your choice, electrolysis or laser, hopefully I have uh, I explained it in detail for you. Now, when you do uh, electrolysis, some of the things that you need to know is that just after the electrolysis, you will see like li little red dots uh, because she has destroyed uh, some, some tissue. And uh, so you must apply, hopefully she will, but if she doesn't, apply some polysporin and, uh, and do it like every day for a few days. However, after a couple of days, you will see like little scabs. Please do not touch those scabs. Do not, because if you pick at those scabs, you will cause like little scars and you don't want that. And scars, then it will, they will not go away. So what I usually advise to apply some mineral makeup, not foundation, some natural mineral makeup. And I have a link below that you just put it on. It's just like powder and it covers up a little bit of uh, the, uh, the little red dots or the scabs. With laser, uh, there's no needles going in, so there's not gonna be any irritation that way. You'll have some redness from, from the heat. So I usually advise to apply some uh, gel, like aloe vera gel, uh, some soothing creams, but aloe vera gel is, uh, is the best thing. And uh, after about a couple of hours, the redness will uh, go away. I hope, oh, before I, I forget, with, body area. I don't, first of all, I don't advise uh, laser on the face, but on the body, um, go to a technician that has a lot of experience, first of all. But you can also get yourself uh, a little um, laser machine for home use that you can use in between. Uh, so you go to the technician, she does it you're all over the place, but when some of the hairs come back, you can do it. Don't do it on the face, but on the body you can. And below I have a couple of links, uh, some from the US and some from Canada, that they are actually, these are actually quite good machines that you can do laser on the area where the hairs are coming back. Okay, please not on the face.
So what will it be? Laser or electrolysis? They all, both of them have their pros and cons. One is permanent and one is permanent hair reduction. So you need to make that decision. Do you have a small area or a large area? Are you working on the face or the body? So they both have benefits. I hope I answered all your questions. If you have additional questions, please uh, put in the comment below and I will personally will answer myself. Until then, give me thumbs up, nice smile, and I will talk with you very, very soon.